I forgot that it comes only after the special music. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this time of worship. It is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, but if you look at your bulletins, we named it as a Sunday when we celebrate. A little bit of love goes a long, long way. Today is a day we celebrate what that love means and how long and how far it goes, how far it takes us. The three key words I would like you to hold in your heart as you prepare for worship is 
Faith, family, fellowship. Faith, family, fellowship. The meaning of family is not defined as I said last week, if you remember. Family and family ties by blood is not the way God defines family and gives us, gifts us this family relationship. We are connected to each other. We are woven together by God's love. And if it was not for that weaving of love together, weaving of communities and families together, we will not be here and we will not have the presence of Mary and Darcy who actually define for us how they become part of the Olean family. I have not yet started the sermon. <laughs> this is only a wee bit of an introduction to the worship. Let us keep a moment of silence and prepare our hearts to worship God. Please time us, April. <coughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God our provider, of God. In Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen.
Holy God, your word leads your Whose land you are living. 
but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out all before us, all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Here ends the reading. Today's responsive reading is Psalm 34, verses 15 through 22. The eyes of the Lord are up on the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who are evil, to the grace of remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. God will keep safe all their bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be perished, punished. O oh Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second reading is the sixth chapter of Ephesians, verses one through verses ten through twenty. Like a general giving a rousing speech to the troops before battle, the letter chooses by calling on Christians to be equipped with spiritual warfare against evil. The, arm, the full armor of God includes truth, righteousness, peace, faith, the gift of salvation, and the word of God inspired by the Spirit. The reading. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power, but on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the death of devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmetic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to squench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert in all this persevering supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the boldness, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in change. May thy Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Here ends the reading.
which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord.
golf cart. So the brick, so my car wouldn't go. I was stuck. And we were stuck on a block. We couldn't go forward. We yeah. couldn't go This backwards. happened this morning. This morning. And we were like stuck on this block and we're like, where did that block come from? Yeah. Fortunately, there's Bob. <laughs> Bob came to the rescue and, and then another guy came. It took, it took three guys to get they it, jack the car, jack the car up. up. And then we had to take the brick out. Man. Does that ever happen to you? Like, you get bricks in your life, you get things stuck. Do you ever feel stuck? Wait, let's let's talk to Buddy Gator. Well, Buddy, you your your day was unbearable too. Like the whole year. Well, well, let's uh, say yeah. we're gonna we're gonna check Buddy Gator's heart because there's only something in our hearts that sometimes tells us what's going on. So I'm gonna turn it over like this. And you're going to physically move the floor back to Okay? It's not that gross. Sadie, Sadie, Sadie loves to do this. Yeah, let's see. Well, let's, let's find out what's in the Can you open it up and find out what's in there? Okay. It's, it's, it's a rocky it's, road. Rocky road ice cream? Why do you have rocky road ice cream? I mean, it's not a wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's not it's a dilly. You know what? <laughs> it's been a what? Oh, it's been a rocky road this year. Mm. Mm. How, how many have a rocky road? How many? We can relate. How many like, feel like, like that brick? How many feel like you've had a rocky road this year? I, I know. I know what's been going on here. I know what our life was going on. But let me tell you. Hold, hold this for me. When the road is rocky, there's something the Lord asks us to do. He asks us to stand on the rock, the solid rock, Jesus Christ. Because all other ground is sinking sand. When you put the solid rock back in the heart, and what was that? Oh, that's right. When when the road is rocky too, we have our faith. And guess what? We have our family. And you know who that is? That's the body of Christ who prays for each one of us. And then we have fellowship which strengthens us. But you know, when do the rocks? We're not doing the sermon, you know. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are the rock. You are the rock I build upon. I build upon. Girl, you are the rock. You are the rock I build upon. I build upon. When the wind blows, when the wind blows, I know, I know. Girl, you are the rock. You are the rock. Jesus, Jesus. Okay, need to see your hands. You are the rock. You are the rock I build upon. I build.
Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Gracious and loving God, thank you for gifting us with Jesus, the living word, the word who became flesh and dwelt among us, the word who is the bread of life, Feed us every day with this faith and energy that we can all be together, function together as one body of Christ and live for truth, love and justice in this world. Use us, O oh Lord, one more time, every time. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from the triune God be with us all. Amen. This is sermon number two. The sermon was already preached and proclaimed. The word of God that can be communicated to the world in different ways, different forms, different communication means and methods. What we need to realize is God chose to communicate God's love and purpose for the whole world in sending Jesus as the Word who became flesh. And Jesus proclaimed this Word, the living Word, the bread of life, so much so that people did not understand the significance, the real meaning behind eating and drinking the body and blood of Jesus. Is it? Mm, that doesn't taste good, sound good. That's almost like cannibalism. No, we will just leave. Your teaching is very difficult. What did Jesus really mean? when he said, I am the bread of life. Jesus used the word of God as the bread of life. If you remember the time when the tempter came to him, when Jesus was there 40 days in the desert, that Satan knew exactly how to test Jesus. If you are really the son of God, turn these stones into bread. The bread that would feed people, but that bread which would not give eternal life. Bread. But Jesus used the word of God as the weapon, as the shield. And Said back to that serpent, that Satan, you know that human beings cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So to tackle, to engage that Satan, the only weapon Jesus used was the word. The word of God is a shield. The word of God not only protects us and shows us the way we need to go, but also becomes the mirror against which we look at our whole lives and say, is this the way of God or am I walking in the opposite direction? Getting back into the groove of the word of God is like clicking the reset button in our lives. Back to factory settings. What is God's purpose in creating each one of us if not to proclaim God's love? To realize that we are all created in God's own image. And that is when Jesus turns to the disciples. You probably were a little confused when we read in the gospel text that some disciples walked away from Jesus. The word disciples, 
once again includes followers of Jesus and not just the twelve. For us to come back into the group of the word of God, there is a formula. There is a formula to become a member of that family of Jesus Christ. And Jesus says this, who is my mother? Who is my brother, my sister? The one who listens to the word of God, who obeys the word of God, and thus what is right, what is God's will, is my mother, is my brother, my sister. A new definition of a family. The sign today reads, we are God's family, growing in faith, hope, and love every day. That is what we continue to do. Faith, family, and fellowship. How else is it possible for me to be here standing at the pulpit, coming to Olia, I didn't know where Olien was. But here I am. God's divine purpose connecting us all together. How did that relationship happen between Phyllis and Mary and Darcy and the rest? I heard that they were being stopped seven years just to get them to the church. Faith, family, fellowship. Today, we rewrite, we reaffirm that principle. Joshua got it. In the first reading that we had, Joshua got it. He looked at the people who knew very well what God's plan of salvation, God, what God's plan of redeeming them, taking them through that desert. Forty years meant they kept complaining. They did not trust God who provided for them when there was nothing. They complained when they didn't have food or water. They said it would have been better for us to stay back. It would have been better. You definitely had a reason to bring us all out here so that we could die. They refused to see God's purpose in their everyday lives. Joshua says, make a choice. There are gods, and by gods what we mean is that in which we put our whole selves that we refuse to see God in the other. Anything that prevents us from seeing God's purpose for each one of us, to see God's image, becomes a God for us. So Joshua's words to the people, choose this day which God you will serve, God of life, or the God who demands your life. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. A choice made, declared. Today, the invitation is renewed, renewed for only a family to be that light, shining light, and to be that body of Christ that shows the world that love is at the core. God's grace is at the core. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>
trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Calling on the Spirit of Wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conservation, organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God, God of grace, we thank you for bringing Mary Rice Hopkins and Darcy Mays to our midst today to spread the message of the gospel of faith, hope, and love. Bless their ministry and use them as your instruments of grace, peace, and joy. We thank you for that faith, friendship, and fellowship that blossomed and bore fruit in this church family and community through Phyllis Ambre, your beloved child, who we remember today in love. Merciful God, God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see fit. Sustain all who serve on juries in their deliberations. Merciful God, God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Care for those on our hearts. We especially lift up all those on our prayer list. Merciful God, God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God, we lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Jesus, bread of life, you have set us to stay holy through your self and called us to the peace of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this field. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world.
salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. invites you to the stable.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen.